It's Texas and it's 100 degrees today. So. Man, it's so hot and humid out here. I can't even wear no drawers. So what's a good thing to do besides be outside in the heat? Play games on my Atari 800XL and my Commodore 64. Great sound chip, the Commodore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna be checking out these games today. They all start with the letter C and I love doing these series. I love how passionate the community is about whatever system they love or grew up with. It's very interesting to see just the different perspectives of the different systems. A reason I got them both for my collection is because I wanted to check it out. Obviously I'm a Commodore guy, but I got the Atari a couple of years ago and this is how I get to explore all that software along with the Commodore 64 software. So go ahead, pull up a chair, grab a joystick and let's get this thing started. Boom. We're gonna be diving into one of the all time favorite arcade games, Centipede, and we'll be exploring its arcade version and then comparing the two ports, the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800XL. So let's get started. Centipede was a true gem in the arcade scene, captivating players with its fast-paced action and its unique gameplay. It was released in 1980 by Atari, and this iconic game was an instant hit. Let's take a closer look. In the arcade version, Centipede had vibrant graphics with bold and eye-catching colors. The gameplay was smooth and responsive, and how could you forget the trackball on the fire button? I love the trackball. In fact, I think it might have been the first game I ever played with the trackball. Oh, and the sound. The sound was great, loud and immersive, and truly added to the overall experience. So now let's compare the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800XL ports of Centipede. Both of these home computer versions were highly anticipated, with the Commodore 64 being a port from the original Atari version. First up, the Commodore 64. This version really impressed me. The graphics were stunning, boasting bright and vivid colors and stayed true to the arcade original. The sound was equally impressive, large and loud audio experience that intensifi intensified the gameplay and the controls felt great, allowing for smooth movements and precise shooting. Next, let's look at the Atari 800XL port. While it played well and had excellent controls, I have to say the graphics didn't quite match up to the Commodore 64. The colors weren't as vibrant and the overall visual experience felt slightly lacking. And additionally, the sound didn't quite capture the same level of immersion as the Commodore 64. And as you can see when comparing the two versions side by side, the Commodore 64 definitely stands out. The spiders, for example, appeared smaller and less detailed than the Atari 800XL version, where the Commodore 64, they retained their impressive presence. And in conclusion, both the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800XL ports of Centipede offered enjoyable gameplay experience. However, if you're looking for the best visual and audio fidelity, the Commodore 64 version takes the crown. It truly showcases the power of the system and the effort put into the port. So that wraps up this comparison of Centipede across these two different platforms. Let's go on and move to the next game. Castle Wolfenstein is a game that holds a special place in the hearts of many retro gaming enthusiasts. It's a thrilling and an intense experience, but how does it compare between the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800XL? Let's find out. Graphics, both the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800XL version of Castle Wolfenstein offer similar graphics with character sprites and environments that effectively capture the game's atmosphere. However, the Commodore 64 version has slightly better color and more detailed visuals, giving it a slight edge in terms of visual appear. When it comes to sound, both do an excellent job. The speech and the yelling of the guards in the game add in an extra layer of excitement and makes you feel like you're in the castle being hunted by the guards. In controls, that's where things get a bit tricky. Both versions of Castle Wolfenstein have unconventional control schemes, mainly when playing solo. You have to use the keyboard to fire your weapon and throw grenades, which can become cumbersome and lead to stressful moments in battle. It's worth noting that if you have two players and two separate joysticks, the gameplay experience can be smoother as one player can focus on aiming while the other handles firing. 
the gameplay remains consistent across both systems, offering intense first-person action as you navigate enemy-filled corridors, collecting treasures, and eliminating guards. The core gameplay mechanics are intact, providing both platforms with an immersive and challenging experience. Castle Wolfenstein is a fantastic game that delivers tense and engaging gameplay. While the Commodore 64 version may have a slight advantage in graphics and sound, both versions successfully capture the essence of the game. I lean towards the C64, but that is because that's where I first encountered this masterpiece of a game. In conclusion, Castle Wolfenstein is a true gem of the air, offering a unique gaming experience on the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800XL. Both versions will immerse you into the thrilling world of Castle Wolfenstein. Now let's move on to our next game on our list. Choplifter keeps popping up in my videos, but when looking at the best games that start with the letter C on the C64 and Atari, you must discuss it and have it on the list. Choplifter is a classic side-scrolling shooter game available both on the Commodore 64 and Atari 800 XL. And let's compare the two versions. Graphics, the Commodore 64 version has a slightly better visuals with vibrant graphics, while the Atari 800 XL version captures the essence of the game and looks good too. The Commodore 64 version excels with the whirl of the helicopter blade audio, while the shooting is pew pew sound, which isn't great. And the Atari 800 XL helicopter sounds much weaker and the shooting sound is very weak too. You do hear the tank shooting at you where on the C64 it's silent, so I did like that. Now both versions, control wise, had really responsive controls, making it easy to navigate your helicopter and rescue the hostages, and to maneuver around planes in later levels. And the gameplay is essentially the same in both versions, offering challenging and addictive experiences. And while the C64 shines in graphics and sounds, both versions faithfully capture the game's essence and provide enjoyable gameplay. So I'm going to put this as, this is a toss. I can decide one way or another. I think they're both great. You let me know down in the comments which one did you think was better. And in conclusion, Choplifter offers a tremendous retro gaming experience on both the C64 and the Atari 800 XL. Which one was your favorite? Let's move on to the next game. Championship Load Runner is a classic puzzle platform game that has captivated players for decades. And now we're going to compare them on both these systems. Now, both the Commodore 64 and the Atari versions of Championship Load Runner feature similar graphics that stay true to the game's original visuals. The character sprites, the platforms, and the maze layouts are faithfully reproduced on both media, providing a nostalgic and familiar experience. And the sound on both systems sound really good, just like you remember from the original system when you jump off of things and when you dig the holes. And the controls are really good. You can really move around fast on Championship Load Runner. Very responsive. You'll be okay with navigating the maze, digging holes, and outsmarting the enemies on either platform. Uh, this is a draw for both platforms for me. And the gameplay remains consistent again across both versions. And you can just, by looking at these side by side, can tell that these games are very, very similar. And this is just a timeless classic. I have to put this one on here, obviously, because we all love Load Runner. You know what? I need people to help me get out of this first level because I could not remember how to get past it. How do I get those bottom ones without getting stuck? Someone put it down in the comments. So let's move on to the next game. Congo Bongo is an arcade game that takes us on a jungle adventure, but how does it compare between the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800 XL? Let's find out. Both the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800 XL versions of Congo Bongo offer visually appealing jungle landscapes and vibrant character sprites. I think the C64 and the Atari 800 XL look great in this game. And I think the sound on both systems were equally impressive. The music sounded great. I have no complaints on either system. Now, when it came to the controls, I felt the controls on the Atari 800 XL version were easier to control and perform jumps more accurate. And I thought the C64 version struggled with the controls, making it hard to make simple jumps. And I would give that control edge to the Atari 800 XL. 
The gameplay experience is similar on both platforms. You got to do the same thing, be a fearless explorer, jumping over obstacles and avoiding dangerous creatures on their quest. And both versions offer challenging and addictive gameplay that will keep you engaged if you like this kind of game. And while both systems shine in graphics and sound and gameplay, the Atari takes the win for me on the controls alone. I found it more enjoyable experience without the frustration that the Commodore 64 gave me while playing it. I want to know, what is your favorite version? Put it in the comments and let's move on to the next classic game. Chuck E. Egg is a classic platformer that evokes memories of games like Miner 2049er. And as we compare the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800XL version, today is how old I was when I first played Chuck E. Egg. Yep, it's my first time. And here are my thoughts. The graphics, the Atari 800XL version of Chuck E. Egg stands out with its superior graphics. The bright colors and pictures have more detailed designs, making it look really cool. And meanwhile, the Commodore 64 version looks dull and faded. And when it comes to the sound, both versions have their strengths. The Atari 800XL sounds like I'm playing Miner 2049er, and that's cool. And the sound seems identical to that game. And on the other hand, the Commodore 64 version offers a more muted sound. Now the controls of Chuck Yeag I didn't like. It definitely was a challenge with the ladder navigation. Yet it position yourself precisely in the middle to climb up and down smoothly. Occasionally, the grabbing mechanism may not respond timely. And maneuvering on the platform can also pose a challenge. And it's worth noting that this aspect remains similar on both systems. Now for the gameplay, I say it's the same on both the systems, the C64 and Atari. You'll see similar levels, bad guys, and how to play, which makes it feel like an old school game, and it's really fun. Now, overall, both versions of Chuck E. Egg offer an okay gameplay experience. The Atari 800XL version shines with its superior graphics and sound. The Commodore 64 was still enjoyable with its muted visuals and lacking audio, but I would say the Atari 800XL is the clear winner of Chuck E. Egg. Now, let's proceed on to the next game. The Cosmic Tunnels takes us on a thrilling space adventure, but how does it compare between the two systems? Here's another game that would be the first time that I ever played on either system. Now, both versions of the Cosmic Tunnels are visually engaging with their space environments, and both the Atari and C64 look really good. The colors are rich, and I just really enjoyed it. Now the sound, I say this one's a draw also. I think both systems sounded really good on each of the different levels and I have no complaints either way. Now the gameplay experience is similar on both platforms too. The players navigate through these treacherous tunnels. They avoid obstacles and enemies while collecting power-ups. It's worth noting that the Commodore 64 version offers three difficulty levels, which provides a range of challenges to suit different players. Now, on the other hand, the Atari 800XL version offers two difficulty levels. Now, collecting the power-ups on the Commodore 64 was harder to do. Those little guys were fast and wouldn't even let me leave my rocket sometimes. I'm going to have to leave this one up to the viewers. It's a draw for me. I think they were both fun. Leave down in the comments what you think is the better system. Now, let's move on to some more retro goodness. Caverns of Kafka is an intriguing game that takes players on an adventure through treacherous caverns and let's compare the two systems. The Commodore 64 version attempts to improve the game with enlarged graphics, but unfortunately it resulted in a bad experience. On the other hand, the Atari 800XL version maintains a more faithful representation of original visuals. The sound both of them are decent, and none of it, neither of them really stand out to me. The controls on the Commodore 64 version feel clunky, making it a challenge to navigate the caverns and leading to frequent deaths. And the Atari XL version, in comparison, is much more responsive, much more easier to control. And the core gameplay remains similar in both versions. You're supposed to explore these challenging caverns and face various obstacles. However, the Atari 800XL version provides a smoother and more enjoyable gameplay experience. The Atari 800XL emerges as the preferred choice when comparing these two games, as good graphics, better control, and improved gameplay, which makes it the superior option. 
And in conclusion, for fans of Caverns of Cough Cough, the Atari 800XL version offers a more satisfying and enjoying gaming experience. Now, let's move on to the next game. For these last three, I'm going to do 30 seconds of each game side by side. And we're going to be looking at Castle Hassle, Caverns of Erebent, and Seslavi. And all three of these games, two of them I've never played before, the Castle Hassle and the Seslavi. The Caverns of Erebat I played before on the Commodore 64. It's okay. Uh, the Castle Hassle is very old. Looks, reminds me of Atari 2600 version type game. And the Seslavi, when you run around collecting all the money and playing the stock market, that was an interesting game. Never played it before, and you got to dodge the mugger coming after you and the different thing. All three were very similar to me. Want to know from you guys, which is your favorite system for these three games? So that's going to wrap it up. I want to ask something. When you do make comments down, down below, I'd love to hear where you guys are from. I'm always interested when you make the comments where you're located. So you got hard, kid. Where are you from? Let's move on to the next one. And don't forget to comment, subscribe, like, and I hope you enjoyed this video on the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800 XL. So that's a wrap, guys. That's all the games on the Atari and the Commodore 64 that we're going to be looking at today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now it's your turn to put down in the comments. And if there are any comments from the audience, just feel free to toss them right up here. Everything that you thought when you played these games before, which system did you think was better, the Commodore, the Atari, or were they equally the same? Love to hear from you. Don't forget out on floppydeepdive.com. You can download these D64 files and check them out for yourself. So stay curious, stay creative, and keep retro gaming. Boom.